right, so to get started with shortening up the your knuckles, I guess, we're going to attempt to make some chopped uh, drift knuckles. So the first step is going to be to make a jig. So I have a piece of flat bar right here, and you're going to want a hole big enough so that the whole thing sits kind of flat, just like that. Okay, so I chopped the second piece, and I went ahead and tacked it right there. You're going to take your castle nut and you're going to bolt up your, uh, you know, your knuckle, your steering knuckle, like you would bolt it up. And then the second one, we're going to add a bolt with a nut. We're going to weld it on right there. So basically I have a hole that the end fits into, and then I have a hole that mounts to the end. Of it. I saw another YouTuber give this a try, so basically I'm just giving it a try. So basically it goes in like that. So we're gonna make a mark in the middle, break apart these two plates, and then slide this end closer to this end. Um, and that'll make our jig before we um, you know, chop this apart and start welding this. So I've broken the two plates apart. Now I'm, I've determined that I think I will go ahead and I will do an inch and a half reduction. That's basically this distance from right here, about an inch and a half. So I made my marks before I broke it. Now I'm gonna take the tape measure and just move them down an inch and a half and then tack weld them there. Basically I have to make that hole line up on that bolt and then using this jig, I'll weld the whole entire knuckle back together. But now it's gonna be time to do some cutting and some fitting. Okay, so this is how far I got. I got my jig made up and I did a test fit on the Tacoma. And um, it looks like this idea that I have will work. I'm just gonna have to flip the tie rod for the steering from the bottom to the top. I don't know how much that's gonna affect anything, but you know, I'll be the I'll be the guinea pig and I'll I'll test this. But anyway, I have it shortened up. I have it on the jig, and I have both pieces of metal cut up to fit. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and weld them together. the first weld down make sure you bolt the whole thing down so it doesn't flex too much while you're welding and i went ahead and i welded on the end right there so now it's time to fill in the welds on the other side and um and do another test fit Now that I have one of these completed, I kind of have a better idea of what the fuck I'm talking about, so I, I can walk you guys through this this step a little bit easier. Anyway, so here's the, this is a cool thing about that jig I made. I think, I haven't seen anyone online do this because I don't know how accurate it is. So the hole that the rod goes into for both sides is the same on both sides. So I figured I um, might as well just make it a two-sided jig. You know, one for the left, one for the right hand side. So I've got this piece of metal welded right in here. So you can actually do one side and then flip it and do the other. And it's already the exact whatever inch and a half measurement. We don't have to make two separate jigs. So I went over this three times because, you know, it's a steering component and you don't want it to break. So looks like it welded up okay. No porosity. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how that goes with the other side. All right, so I showed you how to make and install your very own drift knuckles for your 96 Tacoma, but this is another thing that I didn't think about until recently, that the only way that this can work is with extended tie rods. You can buy some 2001 Toyota RAV4 two-wheel drive tie rods, and if you look, I think this one is for this side, yeah. If you look, it is a little bit longer and the threads should all be the same. So I'm gonna throw these on and take it to the alignment shop and hopefully these are long enough for it to work. Okay guys, so I have the Toyota RAV4 tie rods installed and screwed down all the way. And with them screwed down all the way, both of my, um, and with the Toyota RAV4 tie rods screwed all the way in, both of my front wheels are still facing a tiny bit that way. 
So basically what I need from them is to screw in just a little deeper. As you can see, the tie rod is curved, so it can't screw in anymore. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some length off of the inner tie rod just so I can screw it in a tiny bit more. Now I may be doing all of this incorrectly. There are no how-tos online or forums. All I heard was that these ones can work. So I'm gonna make them work and get to the alignment shop as soon as possible. Okay, so on top of shortening the inner tie rods, I'm also gonna take it upon myself to shorten the outer tie rod as well. I'm basically just gonna be cutting right, right where the wrench goes on. So, so right there, I'm just gonna be cutting that off. If I were to guess, that would be hmm, maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter inch um, off of that because I still need the locking nut to lock down the tie rod to fit as well as more length on the inside so i'm just going to trim this one up just the smallest bit so that locking nut will fit no problem and then i'll show you guys what i was talking about once i install it okay so this is it i have the shortened tie rod itself and the shortened inner tie rod i don't have the nut set because i'm i'm gonna wait to eye out the alignment once I have the other side done. But as you can see, I did need a crush washer on top and I needed to shave uh, this bolt down a little bit so the threads will clear so I can get a full lock on this so I don't have any, you know, any wandering steering or anything like that. So yeah, that side's pretty much all buttoned up. So everywhere I've tried to get an alignment has refused to do it on my truck because they require factory specs or something like that I, I tried to reason with them because I just was looking for something straight but um, everyone kind of refused to do it okay now this is the final piece that I was waiting on is gonna be these two inch wheel spacers now these are a lot bigger than I thought they were gonna be but I'm hoping with this two inches of space that my wheel will be able to make um, the clearance that I need it to Yeah, so basically the spacers were kind of mandatory because the issue I was having was my wheel was rubbing against my uh, roll bar pretty bad and I didn't want to have to get rid of it or move it. So I just tried the spacers at first and so I threw them in and I'm not hitting anything. So I'm going to drop the car down and see if I have any hitting on my fenders. All right, so this is how the Tacoma sits with the wheel spacers installed. Now I knew it was gonna be super wide and I knew cutting the fenders was a possibility because if I hit a nasty bump, it's just gonna shred my tire up. So I don't think I can roll my fenders and there's nothing I can do about camber, so. So yeah, I'll just, uh, I'm just gonna get the Sawzall and chop up the fenders some. <laughs> after installing the wheel spacers and <laughs> I trimmed up the fenders, but clearly it wasn't enough because the first thing I did was hit a damn bump and dent up my perfectly trimmed fender. Maybe I can, maybe I can. All right, yeah, I can work with this. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. So, um, cool. Yeah, it happened on both sides. I hope I didn't shear my tire too bad. Okay, so that's it for the drift day prep. I took the truck out for a test rip just around the block, uh, nothing too crazy, and it feels really good. So I'm super excited for the drift event tomorrow. And um, yeah, that'll be in the next video. So this is it for drift day prep. Um, nice that little how-to for you a couple days before the event. Just in time, like just how I like to do it. But um, you know, we always come out in the end. So I will see you guys at the event.